This is Python's Paradise. This is your host, Greg Gilbert, a.k.a. the Python Hyena, and folks, here we are, October 13th, 2021. I have a wonderful guest on the show today. Actually, we could say she's a looker. <laughs> folks, I have the lovely, the beautiful Gina Keo on the show for, for today. How do you do, Gina? I'm good. Back when I did Looker, my name was Gina Tomasino. Yeah. So, not, not <laughs> yeah, I was looking you up last... That. Yeah. You know what? I was looking you up last night, and it was kind of like, I don't watch television. My TV is actually only set up to watch my Blu-rays. And I was like, you're ma yes. yeah, I guess you're known mainly as being a Beverly Hills housewife of uh, Orange County. And... That is Actually, something I'm Orange County housewife, yes. Yeah, I, I, I'm so out of touch with that because I don't watch uh, television. So I'm like, okay. uh, yep. Yeah. So it's like, I know you more for your films, whereas a lot of people probably know you more for your, your television. Do you prefer doing film or television? Well, film's much more a longer commitment. You're usually there for six weeks filming if you're doing a movie. So I don't know. They're both fun. They both have their interesting parts. Television is more reality. Most of my television in the last bunch of years have been reality based. So mm -hmm. it's different being yourself than playing a character. So, yeah. Well, you know what? We are, we are celebrating. Look at this. Look what I have on Blu-ray. <laughs> I was looking to see looking to see if I have it and I don't think I do you know what I just discovered looker I think last year I found it on YouTube and um because um I would have been nine years old in 1981 when this came out and I didn't see it back then obviously but um but I love looking at the uh films that came out then the era I grew up in and so I checked this out and um, I watched it on YouTube and then I enjoyed it so much. It's like, I got to get myself a copy of this. <laughs> so I got, got the Blu-ray and uh, I'm so happy to get you on here today so that we could celebrate this because I'd love to help this film find uh, a bigger audience. Interesting. Yeah. I don't, see my, I don't see my name in the credits and I am... In the IM TV. Hmm. Yeah, you Old play best. Susie. <laughs> I actually watched this last night after I got back from work, and uh, and uh, this film was a little ahead of its time, you know, and what it was dealing with, and uh, uh, the technology element, you know. Would would you not agree? I, I think I would agree. Yeah. Well, talk about getting cast in uh, Looker. You know, at the time I had just finished, what year was this filmed? 1981. Okay, at the time this all had gone down, I had just done Playboy Centerfold, 1980. Mm -hmm. was still kind of, I was working on a band with girls from the mansion, mm -hmm. all the playmates. We had just filmed this filming some TV specials and been doing some traveling with the band and I was doing movies. I think I had also done Death of Ocean View Park with Kenny Rogers. And was that, that was my first movie. And Looker, the director was... Michael Crichton. Well, actually he was the writer. He wrote the script. But uh -huh. then I don't even see his name in here. I see Nick Kramer. So... What was he, the producer? What was Michael Crichton's credit on this? Oh, let's, did, let's give her a check here. Credit? Well, yeah, it says on um, Wikipedia, it says Michael Crichton. Okay. Yeah. So he was wonderful. I spent most of my off time on the set hanging out with him because he was just 
cool and fun. And he was dating my girlfriend, Terry Wells. Yeah. <laughs> Terry Wells in this as well. <laughs> but I don't see her name in credits in order either. So I don't know. Yeah. It's kind of a, I'm in the wrong thing, I guess. Well, sometimes you have to go into, uh, if I, if I look up, um, But if I, if I he look always up, asked me for help in dealing with her because she was so hard to direct. Oh. <laughs> because she was dating him, she just thought, I'm not ready to come out yet or whatever. She was a little rascal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah was. No. It was her first film. She had just won Playmate of the Year. And she left right after this movie. She left and went back to New York and married a hockey player. So, oh, there you go. She wasn't around much. Yeah, if you go on IMDb, you go into uh, at the bottom of the cast thing. Uh, you you were um, underneath. It says director Michael Crichton, writer Michael Crichton, and then it says underneath all cast and crew. If you click all cast and crew, you'll find your name down there. All right, that was a little tiny thing, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. I don't. I know I was in it, so yeah. I'll have to watch it again. I don't remember a lot about it. Yeah, you still in touch with Terry Wells? No, I haven't reached out to her in twenty years. I bet. There you go. Um. Well, wait, you you had mentioned you were a Playboy um, centerfold. I, I've interviewed several uh, actresses that have uh, been Playboy centerfolds. What was your memories of that and Hugh Hefner? Oh, it was like a giant sorority. It was fun. I was around for three or four months. I was dating someone who was close with Hef, so we went up there a lot and we were, we only lived maybe three blocks away so he was just a cool sensitive guy seemed really interested in what people had to say and where they were from and from the day he met me in Chicago he always would say that girl's smart like a fox because they would meet these sweet innocent girls from small towns and I was from Wisconsin, but I had lived the last two years probably modeling in Chicago. So I was pretty worldly and streetwise and not much went past me. You know what? I've heard that he was a very nice guy. He I've was. heard that everybody I've interviewed that has uh, been part of that scene have spoke very highly of him. Yeah. yeah. Do you still got- one of those guys who would say, no, he would be. He was like me and saying there are no there are no auditions on Sundays at a hotel wearing a swimsuit. No, take three girls with you. So he was so you know he'd seen it all. You know, mm -hmm. The guys that would tell the girls, "Come on, come on, we've got an audition this weekend at a hotel. Come and come and do it." <laughs> it was funny. So. Uh... Looker, of course, falls right hand in hand uh, with something like that because, uh, of course, the backstory to this, it deals with something that's very true today, uh, plastic surgery, cosmetics, and, uh, and um, I found it f really funny. The opening scene of this movie, you got this gorgeous woman sitting in albert finney's office and of course he plays a plastic surgeon and yeah, his credits weren't even on this page i was looking at either he was yeah. fascinating well he's listening to this woman talk about all of her flaws and you're kind of like him like really what flaws <laughs> you know, this poor woman and i get the feeling there's a lot of that kind of insecurity not just out there in the world, but in the business, uh, entertainment business in general. Oh, I think so too. I have several friends that are plastic surgeons and he said, you know, you have to be half of a psychiatrist because is she unhappy in her marriage? Is she, whatever, why does she want to change her nose? Her nose is perfect and, it, and it's her and it looked fine in the pictures. You know, they always want to go in and 
there are times when you can end up with a Michael Jackson nose. You can have one of those bodies that just doesn't want to have your bones worked on or your bones won't heal. I was watching on TV last night a, a show about Dorothy Stratton, the centerfold who'd been killed. Mm -hmm. And one of the women on there, one of the people that worked for Playboy had had that happen to her. She'd had the same thing happen that Michael Jackson had that you have a surgery and you just don't heal. And then you have to go in and have another one and another one. And eventually there's hardly any little bones left in your nose. Yeah, it's unfortunate. And like I said, what watching, there's kind of a reality check looking at that open opener and uh, him seeing these women in his office and hearing them basically critique themselves when they're already like what guy wouldn't want to be with them you know but it's kind of a self-image thing you know yeah yeah so he he kind of wouldn't turn he i think he turned down a lot of work my friend he yeah just didn't want to deal with you know because those are the people that will come back and not be happy because it, their life hasn't changed miraculously because they did something to their face so, yeah body I remember taking a girl to the doctor once and she she looked beautiful. So I thought, okay, she's probably getting her boobs done or something. So she said, come with me, you know the doctor, you know, he'll he'll give me a better price if you come and we go in there and she's like, see this little bit of fat right beneath my butt? And we're both looking and it's just like a little tiny row of skin. And he said, that's the skin you need. So when you sit down, you don't tear your butt. You have to have that. Yeah, I can't just have awful. <laughs> <laughs> so he wouldn't do it. And I'm like, are you crazy? She said, I exercise so much. I just can't get rid of this. So. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Love this movie. Uh, great music soundtrack. I'll say oh, this. Yes. The yeah. music was wonderful. I was just enchanted that opening track and even throughout the film, the music was uh, in a way it kind of reminded me of stuff that John Carpenter did in Halloween and some of his other who did films. the music in it. Who did the music? Who was the production? Was it like uh, the post group or? Good question. Um, I wonder if they had a lot of uh, original music in there. That's a good question. Let's, uh, Back then writers were writing songs for films. Music by Barry De, De Vorzan. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know him, but uh, he did a great job in this. Yeah, and it's, it's so cool how they score a movie. I went mm -hmm. to watch 20th Century Fox when they were doing Die Hard. They yeah. had a 150-piece orchestra. So as you're listening to a movie, there's a dramatic scene. And then all of a sudden it just switches to a girl in her bedroom, just another scene. They do another flashback or whatever. But the whole orchestra just, they just one continuous song, which I thought was very interesting. I had no clue. What were your memories of Albert Finney in this film? I, I thought he was so good in this movie. Well, I started bringing him up to the Playboy Mansion because he's charming and funny and Hef really liked him. So when Hef did that 25th anniversary Playmate search, mm -hmm. it was an ABC special, he asked Albert Finney to be his host. So I felt very lucky that, you know, I had introduced them and been around. I always tried to help people. Mm -hmm. So he did a really good job in there, I thought. Yeah, a lot and of humor like, in there. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, Michael Crichton, I mean, I know he's known for his writing and whatnot, but he did a great job directing this. I got to say, there, there's several sequences I can go to on this, you know, but I love the whole thing about the the flash gun, you know, that where it affects time, you know, and and I thought the scene where it was being used on Albert Finney and he was constantly being punched and there was some great shots there, like when he's flying into the glass, you know, and mm -hmm. there was a lot of great suspense in this movie, you know. Um, and I know another YouTuber that just uh, discovered this film, and I'm like, I think more people should see this, you know. Um, it certainly has... Can you show some clips? Huh? 
when you edit this, are you going to show some clips of the movie in it? Or is I've that never, hard to do? I've never done that before. Okay. Yeah. I We just got back into the station that I'm affiliated with because it was in lockdown for like a year and a half. And um, one of my guests I interviewed told me, she said, oh, if I can do Zoom, you can do Zoom. And uh, you're number 108 this year. I, I'm loving this. I don't have to call the station to book the studio to record. Um, yeah, this has just been wonderful. Nice. Yeah. My, my lighting isn't as good at home. Did you make coffee, son? Ah. Coffee. I could I, use some coffee. Can you transport no. some of that in here? <laughs> no, I just need to put some in. Wake me up. I don't know why I stayed up so late last night. And then, of course, at six in the morning, these people outside started trimming trees. Yeah. It's going to be beautiful. What's your weather like in Kent, wherever you are? Uh, it's not too bad. It's getting, it's in that fall season here. Um, we're, are the trees uh, changing? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I'm four hours ahead of you. Uh, we're just past noon here now. And oh. yeah. I always find it funny, and I know we had this conversation where you were like, isn't it three hours ahead? <laughs> yeah, 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 you're just different. Yep. We're, we're, New uh, York? How far are you from New York? i got to go look on a map where you are. I don't know. We're an hour ahead time zone-wise, so. What's the nearest, where do you go to have fun around you? What's where My you cat. <laughs> that does not sound fun. Where do you live? What's your city? Uh, Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada. Um, our closest neighbor is Nova Scotia. Ah. Yeah. Nice. If you've ever seen the trailer park boys, uh, they're probably our closest mm -hmm. celebrities. Huh. Yeah. Gee, I like your cup. Oh, nice and colorful. It's colorful. Well, the sun's just so awkwardly bright today. I'm trying to find a spot that I'm not so white. No, oh, you look great. You look great. Mm. Okay, that seems better. There you go. There you go. Lighting. I was just trying to stay out of my son's way. He doesn't usually get up this early, but probably you heard me talking. <laughs> you know when you have headphones on, you don't really know how. And I'm sorry, my hair is like a mess. And Your hair mess looks great. <laughs> you sound like one of those models in Albert Finney's office. Well, you look you look great. Uh, when you get to my age, you don't always feel like you look great. Well, you know what? Take it from me. There's nothing wrong with you. Thank you. You're welcome. So you're married? You have children? No, you thank God. <laughs> thank goodness, no. I never wanted kids. Um, I got a cat. Really? That's about it, you know. Really? My yep. kids are my world. I have three. Yeah. Well, I got two brothers. I got a niece or niece and nephew. Um, I just never wanted kids. I just, uh, I'm lucky to take care of a cat, you know, um, if people want kids, I say, God bless them. You know, I am, I think it takes a lot of patience and responsibility to have kids. Obviously you've got that. And, uh, for me, I wouldn't want to be neglectful, and I fear I would be. So, uh, so I've never so gone is, that route. Yeah. This is your part-time job. No, this I do for fun. I'm actually an essential worker. I work as a cleaner. I actually I was doing that in the back shift last night. Oh. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm an essential worker too, being a realtor. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, I worked uh, as a cleaner um, through this pandemic and uh, I mostly work by myself, but it, uh, but uh, I do this for fun. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And is it fun? It is fun. Yeah. What's your viewership or your listening audience? You know what? I don't know. It's increasing all the time. Nice. Yep. Um, when I do my live show at the station Sunday nights, it uh, 
I know I've got people tuning in. I don't pay attention to what the viewership is, but I definitely hear from people. And of course, I got nice. the YouTube channel as well. And uh, and um, I'm gaining all the time. Um, but I do know that uh, making good connections with my guests, I had one of them invited me to my first con back in 2017. Uh, Lisa Langwa. What was that? Huh? I mean, um, Comic Con. Uh, it was actually a horror rama, a horror film oh. uh, con. Uh, no. Lisa Langwa from the movie Class of 1984 um, invited me to assist her at that, and it was my first oh. time ever traveling. Huh. And I'm 49 years old, so I'm late to the game on that. But I'm going to tell you, I had a blast at that. I bet you have to get out. Yeah, and I'm still in touch with her, and uh, um, I plan to go to Toronto for Frightmare in the Falls uh, uh, nice. in a couple of weeks, and and um, I asked Lisa if she's available to to meet up, and she is, and and so was, I'm looking forward to that. So, yeah, I I I just I kind of fell into this by accident, you know the the podcast part and I just really enjoy it. It's just kind of nice going back and, and um, interviewing people from these movies and, uh, and uh, hearing their stories and, you know, but. Uh, so Blu-ray, does Blu-ray mean it's 3d? No, no, no. It's got, just the it's got better pit, better picture quality. And, All right. and yeah. How much was it when you ordered it online? I'm going to order one. I don't know. I don't think it was expensive. I just went on Amazon and uh, okay. yeah, I just, I ordered the Blu-ray for it. And uh, yeah, I watched it uh, last night uh, when I got home from work in preparation for this interview, you know, gave it a fresh look and uh, I'm glad I did. Cause I was just enjoying it all over again. You know, <laughs> the moment you know that one you'll, you'll also like is 10 to midnight. Oh yeah, well we're going to get to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. that was a good movie too. Yeah, yeah, but um, this this just seemed like it was. You hear this about certain movies ahead of its time, ahead of its time. This really was ahead of its time. <laughs> it was. Yeah, it was ahead of its time. What was your memories of um, James Coburn? Well, you know what, my phone's you've been through sorry That's um, okay james coburn was very cool very handsome mm -hmm. i liked him i liked him a lot and of course this also had the absolutely gorgeous susan day oh i loved her yeah she was so cool yeah Yep, she, she was, was definitely fun. a looker <laughs> she yeah. was really good in this too you know she was a big actress at the time, wasn't she? Yeah. Is she still working? I don't know. No? I'll have to look it up. Yeah. I walked away from my office because the lighting was kind of bright and awful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, this I'm also had... i watch a... the movie again, though. Huh? I will watch it again. I just, you know, we got so busy with I've had lost a few friends lately to COVID and oh, I'm sorry. Work's been, work's been busy and I've just been overwhelmed. I just filmed a new episode for the Real Housewives of Orange County. Mm -hmm. So that was fun getting back into it and meeting all the new housewives because I've been out of it. I mean, I do one, one little bit. You like being uh, a real estate agent? Yeah. <laughs> Do you get recognized a lot for that? I do. I get recognized <laughs> from the housewives. Yeah. You see, it's interesting because that is what I wouldn't know you from because I don't watch television. But uh, yeah. Yeah. So it must be a nice change of pace for you to get to talk about some of these movies. <laughs> it is. Yeah. I'm try to go back to you see where you are do i once i if i leave if i texted something out there you are okay. there you go but um there is a lot of great humor in this movie too i won't give away the climax but i gotta no, no, no. 
but I will watch it again because I'm so rusty on that movie. They kind of run together, that one in 10 to midnight. I don't know why. Well, uh, the climax of this had a lot of humor to it where um, something is being displayed on monitors and certain figures appear where they're not supposed to be. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're not. Don't tell people. Just tell people how they can find it. Find it on Amazon, huh? Find it on Amazon. Looker. Absolutely. Absolutely. Talk about any, any other experiences you had on this movie. Too far back to remember. <laughs> I couldn't even tell you where we filmed it. If it was Vancouver or if we filmed in LA. Oh, wow. I, just, I didn't have time to refresh my mind on it. That's okay. It was a long time ago. That's okay. I can't remember if I had breakfast yesterday, so. <laughs> oh, that was going to be my next question. <laughs> Well, we're going to look at some of your uh, other credits here because uh, we'll go back. My favorite through. movie to, move, to work on was 10 to Midnight. Charles Bronson was amazing, so kind. My other favorite experience was when my daughter filmed Outbreak with Dustin Hoffman. Okay. Spending six, six weeks in Eureka with a five-year-old. It was really beautiful and interesting and it was the time of year of summer when there was fairs and all kinds of stuff on and when the movie came out I took Cara and all of her friends to the movie theater like three o'clock in the afternoon movie mm -hmm. and I took her then three-year-old brother Cara was about five when she filmed that mm -hmm. so we go we go to dinner afterwards we all go for pizza next door and I take a sip of my son's soda because my drink hasn't come yet. And he starts screaming at the top of his lungs. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Didn't you just see what happens when you share your drink with people? <laughs> <laughs> that movie left such an impression on him. To this mm -hmm. day, if someone says, hey, can I try your beer? He'll let them try it. But then he'll say, you go, no, no, you just keep it. I'm going to order a new one. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you haven't seen Outbreak lately. With the pandemic going on, you should definitely watch Outbreak mm -hmm. because it's so relevant to what's happening now. It was a government government plague put out, pandemic. It was government done. They had the vaccine and they tried to hide it for a, quite a while of the movie because the minute they brought the vaccine out, they would have to admit that they had created the disease. Wow. <laughs> so it's just so real. And the sound effects, if you have any kind of sound system in your house, it is probably the best soundtrack I've ever heard. Maybe Die Hard was pretty close. Mm -hmm. But this, the helicopters and all the different sounds, it's just amazing. It was right when that cool, what was that sound came come out? Um, I don't know. Dol Dolby sound. Dolby, okay. But that was that's when you should watch. I think you'd really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to ten to midnight. You started talking about Charles uh, Bronson. <laughs> oh, he said, you know, when I saw your video, you were so likable and sweet, and I really wanted you to be my daughter in the scene, you know, in the movie. But you're five nine. You don't seem that tall. So you know, we went with Lisa. I, I go back or whatever her name was because mm -hmm. she was only five seven and I'm like I'm five seven but you were looking at my acting my modeling resume and you kind of always fudge on that because you're wearing high heels and you're thin and they're not going to know that you're really not five nine but they want you to be five nine for runway and modeling mm -hmm. and if I wrote five seven they would just go right by me so I did a lot of modeling and I always kept up with the big girls because I had the big personality and people loved working with me. I <laughs> never complained. You know, it was something with high pain tolerance, whatever. I just was an easygoing actress. I did what they said. I always had good, creative, constructive ideas if something wasn't working. So people always liked working with me and would use me again and again. 
Tim Newman probably used me in 50 commercials and different things and finally put me in the ZZ Top videos and used me in all five that he shot. So that was my fun thing to do too. ZZ Top, we just lost one of them as well. Yes, we did. Yeah, my favorite ZZ Top song was uh, You Got Me Under Pressure. I always liked that one. <laughs> oh, and you know what was lucky? is they had just finished filming maybe six months earlier, the ZZ Top special. Have you seen it? No. It's, um, it's a special about ZZ Top and how they got started. And I think the opening credits are myself driving the car. <laughs> so I wish they would have interviewed me for that because I had had so much fun filming with those guys. They were such big fans. They were really cool guys. And I'm did, like, why did you pick me to always drive the car? It's like, well, when y'all showed up on set, you had a $100,000 Mercedes and everybody else had these beater cars. <laughs> they were all beat up with bent up rims. So we knew you could drive. It's like, oh, okay. Did they teach you how to spin an instrument around in circles? <laughs> no, but I just found the keychain the other day. That was kind of fun. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, what I should let you get back. I should get back. Do you have any other questions? Because I kind of have to go answer my phone is just starting to go nuts here. It's not even nine in the morning, is it? Okay. Just let me ask about, uh, yeah. I'll ask quickly, um, working with Mel Brooks and history of the world part one. There was a bunch of playmates he picked to be in that movie. I was the only one who had any lines. And it was so much fun. Uh -huh. I loved our costumes. I loved being in that period. And I wasn't a big Mel Brooks movie kind of girl because, you know, I just didn't watch a lot of movies and TVs back then. Um, but he was fun and fascinating. His wife was lovely. Mm -hmm. It was a fun movie to do. What was that actress? The one who's going, you, 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 you. Is it Madeline something? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Madeline Kahn. God, she was cool. <laughs> yes. yes. I loved her comic. And uh, of course, you worked with Kenny Rogers in uh, Six Pack. Now, I saw that the drive in when I was young. We just lost him during the pandemic as well. Yes. Kenny Rogers was a lifelong friend. From the minute I landed in LA, he, he was friends with the guy I was dating. And we became friends and actually lived in his guest house for a year or two while Kenny was helping my ex at the time, my boyfriend of eight years, remodel his house. He and his wife were really involved in the construction process. And we spent so much time with he and his wife. They were the most lovely, incredible people. He always said, just don't hand your money to these girls that need, you know, need your help. Teach them. He had the philosophy as don't give them the fish, teach them how to fish. So mm -hmm. he, he taught me so much stuff about life because he had done it all, seen it all. And sometimes when I'd go out, I'd be a little snippy at something. And he's like, hey, you're the, that's a waitress. You got, you've got to think about these people. You got to be nice to them. Don't be snippy. It's like, well, I'm hungry. And she didn't bring me my coffee and whatever. And he, he would just crack me down and just say, no, that's not the right way to behave. It's like, okay, geez. Because, you know, when you're with him and his group, everybody fawns all over you. And, you know, you can become a little prima donna while he slapped me back into shape. Yeah, that had uh, a very, very young Diane Lane in it as well. <laughs> she was adorable. She mm -hmm. had just got emancipated from her mother. She was so, so, so sweet and sensitive. And she always was a good actor. And even in her later films, I still remember how sweet she was. And we, we spent a lot of time together because we'd all go out to dinner and hang out because she was a minor at the mm -hmm. time. And I got this film as well you were in, Up the Creek. <laughs> That was uh, very fun. I've interviewed in Julia movie, Montgomery. <laughs> the girl in the movie who started the film with me was John Travolta's wife, Kelly Preston. 
Mm -hmm. And about two weeks into filming, her television show that she had done a pilot for got picked up. And when she had signed on to do the movie, she said, you know, if I get picked up for the show, I don't know if you want me, I'll have to leave if it conflicts because I've signed a contract for them. They have me for the six months or the year, whatever. So she had to leave and Jennifer Runyon took her spot. You know, I do talk to Jennifer Runyon. I have never had her on here yet. She's somebody. Oh, yeah, I, she's adorable. Yeah. I got to get her on at some point. It's funny. She's done all these films, but most people remember her from that one little scene from Ghostbusters. <laughs> now that scene, I don't remember. Oh, yeah. Bill Murray kept favoring her while shocking the fella behind the slender. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But I've interviewed oh, Julia it? Montgomery, who was in this film, and uh, talked about uh, being on the rapids and stuff like that. <laughs> Do you- it was really scary. So there was a part when it was summer solstice, I think they called it, and it had a record snowfall melting year of being in Bend, Oregon, mm-hmm. and it was dangerous on the rapids. Now, Kelly Preston had been trained for two weeks to guide the boat, steer the boat. Jennifer Runyon had not. So I'm thinking this is not a good deal. I think I want a body double. So if you look at the filming of it, whenever there was a tough scene, there's a body double. She was a little chubby, a little bigger than me. And she just had my headband on to try to hide that it wasn't me. But literally the first time they went out, the boat capsized. One of the girls got stuck under the raft for a minute. Everybody floated downhill. And it took a few minutes for that back boat to get to them to help them. And even though I was an excellent swimmer, it's like, you know what? It wasn't worth it. You know, they all had, they could have hit their heads on a rocks. They weren't experienced whitewater rafters. And that was a tricky rapid. It was a scary rapid. So yeah, yeah, that was the only time except for a team that I called in the body, body double, a team I called in the body double. And uh, it was for a swimming scene rescuing Dirk Benedict or something Mm -hmm. and and then after they brought the body double down it's like oh you did that on purpose you know that I'm not going to let that girl walking into the water be my butt double that's not happening (laughs) so I ended up doing the scene anyway my (laughs) ego wouldn't allow it it's like you can't do that (laughs) did uh, you have any memories of uh, Tim Madison and Stephen First in this movie they are wonderful 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 I had such a crush on Tim Madison and Madison in that movie he was such a cool guy and you know he kind of kept to himself a little bit because of his character and Mm -hmm. whatever but he was fun I I always liked the military guy that uh kept trying to sabotage everything and uh kept screwing up (laughs) yeah always enjoyed times yeah well do you have any charities that you want to plug on here well i do plug i do plug um saint jude's for my office Mm -hmm. we're really big in that one and then my daughter cara keo bosworth has a charity connected to Wolf Smith's Hospital, Baptist Hospital in Jacksonville, Florida. And she has raised 75,000 for her son, McCoy Bosworth, that she lost in the pandemic, having trying to have a baby at home so her husband could be with her in her a doula in her, whatever you call the lady who makes you have a baby at home. I forgot what they're called. Surrogate? No, not a surrogate. Midwife. So Midway. She tried to have okay, I don't know why. Home. Oh, why, why was I saying surrogate? <laughs> I don't know. You're just thinking about it, maybe. Yeah, midwife. Okay, all right. You get a web page you want to plug on here? Um, just you know, real estate. I sell mm-hmm. real estate. Um, Jacksonville, Florida. My son and I'll be getting my license down there too because I just bought a home down there a year ago. So real estate in California, Southern Orange County, I'd be glad to help anybody, Cowell Banker. Anybody needing a referral from me anywhere in the United States, I know realtors everywhere because we go to these master top 1% of Cowell Banker meetings 
and I get to meet the big realtors in every city. So 30 years in real estate, I've learned a lot. <laughs> do you ever get to do the conventions? What kind of conventions? Like the uh, comic cons or anything like that? Have you ever been oh, asked to do those? I did Bravo Con, which is a movie all about all the stars of Bravo. Mm-hmm. And that was really fun. They had a, a whole week of Bravo celebrities there. And they had all people joined and they could have dinner with celebrities. They could buy whatever the celebrities were selling at a, like a big Bravo store. And it was really fun getting to see your favorite people from below the deck and all the different TV shows that you don't watch. But <laughs> reality TV was pretty big back when the house Orange County Housewives started because for two or three years, there was a writer's struck strike so there was no new movies or no new tv we were the only thing so we got a big start big jump up from that but i have to run any other questions i have to run get on to my next call <laughs> i'll let you go before i yeah. let you go um yes. would you mind doing a um a plug for my show yes yeah just uh, state your name and say uh, you're you're um, listening to Greg Gilbert on Python's Paradise. Hi, it's Gina Keo, Orange County Housewives. You are listening to Greg Python on Python's Paradise. Absolutely. What do you think? Forty years of Looker wow. and even even History wow, of the World Part One. <laughs> wow, forty years. Damn. You're dating me. Yeah, you still look great. You've got beautiful hair. It's kind of wet now. I just washed it. Yeah. But thank you so much. And uh, I enjoyed being on your show. You know Greg what? Thank Python. you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for coming on here today. I really appreciate it. And you taking the time. And uh, I wish you absolute fantastic luck on uh, your career. And um, I'm glad things are working out for you. Things are. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. All right. You take care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye, honey. Let me turn that off. Turn that off. Leave the meeting.